Hello and welcome to another street photography video with me, Nick Turpin. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at your photographs, the pictures that you've submitted using the hashtag street photo review over the last 10 days. Okay, here we are on my Instagram page, and uh, these are my saved Instagram pictures. Uh, top left here it says, only you can see what you've saved, and uh, that's clearly not true because I'm sharing it all with you today. So, um, I introduced this uh, hashtag, Street Photo Review, and invited you guys to send uh, your pictures or submit your pictures uh, by using that hashtag on Instagram. And um, I've been completely overwhelmed by the response. I think there's like 800 pictures or more uh, using the hashtag now. So. Um, I've whizzed through and chosen some of my favourites um, and I'm going to pick out a few here um, and just to explain why I like them, why I think they're working. Of course this is only my opinion and uh, you know it's a kind of very subjective thing all of that. Um, I'm going to start with a picture, uh, this is the first one that caught my eye. Uh, this is a picture by Cesar de Mello and I'm, I'm quite aware of Cesar's work, I've seen his pictures um, over a number of years. He's really quite an accomplished street photographer, I think. And um, uh, this one caught my eye. Uh, I really like Caesar's working method here, how he's seen these uh, two guys. Uh, I think this is, you know, any of us would have stopped and, and, uh, and noticed this. Um, maybe it's a sort of, uh, maybe they're rugby tops or something. It's a sporting event, I don't know. But they look the same. They look, even the haircuts are similar, similar aged men. They're so, you know, there's this lovely, uh, you know, connection between the two of them. But uh, Caesar hasn't just sort of photographed them, he's tried to make a, a picture out of it. So he's looked around to, in the environment to find other elements that he could use. And this is something which I encourage all the time. And um, you know, he's made a more interesting, more complicated picture out of it. Uh, so he's found this kind of shiny cross in the, uh, embedded in the, uh, the tarmac of the, of the road or the square behind. And he's positioned this very nicely above their heads. He's, he's got behind them, so they're in the middle. And then he's made this nice, nice little gap above their heads before the cross appears. And the cross divides the frame up into a number of different areas. You know, it carves up that rectangle, which is another nice device uh, to use when you're out on the streets. And then he has waited for a, a, another element, which is the walking feet. Um, and he's, you know, he's got them right in the centre, keeping the symmetry of the picture. Uh, and it's just another element of interest that fills that triangle at the top. Without those feet in that triangle at the top, um, your eye would disappear off the top of the picture there. Um, and that those feet just keep you in. And then even the fact that the feet, are, the legs are apart gives you a nice silhouette. And that toe, that leading toe just raised up. It's very nice. Um, so it's a simple, quiet picture, but it's very nicely constructed. He's put it together very nicely. He hasn't just raised the camera and, and taken a snap. Um, and this is what it's all about. Okay, uh, the next picture I'd like to look at is this one here. Uh, this is by Frederick Saiz. Frederick, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, this one really um, stood out for me. Um, you, you found a really nice um, kind of urban architectural uh, environment. I think this is uh, La Défense in Paris, uh, which, which is a place that I've shot myself, which has very contemporary architecture. Um, and I like the way that you framed things. You've kept the, um, you've kept the steps, the lines of the steps, horizontal with the bottom of the frame. And I think, I think the whole picture benefits from that. Um, you've got this nice uh, handrail leading into the frame, which is casting the most incredible shadows on the steps. So where the shadow strikes the steps, they become a zigzag. And where the vertical posts holding the handrail up, where the shadows from that, those strike the steps, you get these fantastic squares. Um, and that in itself is a really fascinating um, little visual device. Um, but then there's your kind of piece de la resistance at the top here, where this girl in black leggings um, is interacting with the shadow so perfectly. You've chosen this perfect moment where um, her leg sort of extends into the shadow. Um, and that's really that's really a terrific moment. I don't think the people, the other people in the picture, are really adding anything to it. But it's such a lovely moment with her in the shadow that I think, you know, we overlook them. Um, you've been lucky with the blue sky and the light. Um, uh, but I think the whole thing works partly because of the moment you've chosen, but also because of your discipline with the composition, um, and it's a real, it's a real picture, not just a photograph. Uh, so congratulations, that really stood out. That was one of the first ones I saw. Okay, 
Now here's a picture by Robert M. Johnson. Um, now Robert has been doing street photo photography for a long time. I've been aware of Robert's work since since I became a street photographer 30 years ago. Um, and I see Robert as one of those photographers, um, you know, capturing life in America, life on the streets of America, very much in this sort of vein of Robert Frank and Winner Grand and, and the real classics of New York street photography. Um, and this is this is a nice, simple picture. Um, it's very graphic. Um, the lines in it are very graphic. Even the logo of the Bank of America that uh, Robert's kept nicely in the bottom left hand corner of the frame there. Very bold, very graphic. It, it works beautifully in black and white. Um, it's tempting when you see a sort of graphic subject like benches to, to get behind them and frame them very, um, you know, very much sort of uh, within the rectangle of, the, of, the, of the, uh, the camera's frame. So I would normally get the benches horizontal with the bottom of the frame. But we would have, um, we would have missed the profiles of the, the two women here. And they're such characters. Robert's come around slightly so that we can see both the profiles of these two contrasting women. Um, and these two women kind of of a similar age and yet um, there's a connection with them but also a distance between them and uh, which I quite like. Um, I like also the way that the um, depth of field slips off into the background. Um, he's isolated them with, with a little bit of um, focus there which is also very nice. Um, I would urge you to go and have a look at Robert's Instagram feed and check out his work. Um, it's a really, he's a really traditional classical street photographer and you can certainly a lot, learn a lot from uh, for going to check that out. Okay, here's a different picture. This is very much an aesthetic picture. I've just discovered Chris Harrison photo. I think he's based in Brighton and I've just started following him on Instagram. Um, I mean, this is a very, just a very aesthetic photograph. It's a be beautiful colours, that wall um, with the lilac opposite and the green door framed by the white uh, window frame. It's just, uh, it's just very visually pleasing, very simple. Um, his work seems to be quite varied. There's all sorts of different kinds of pictures that he's taking. Um, I don't think this is necessarily typical of Chris's work. Um, but there's something rather lovely about it, isn't it? Uh, I think you just, uh, it's just very pleasing, the light and colour. And I don't think, you know, I don't think a photograph, a street photograph has to have any more, any more than that really to be, uh, to be successful. Um, Speaking of light and colour, here's a picture by The Chemist Street. Uh, this is taken in London, I think. I suspect it's Bishopsgate. Now, what really grabs you about this picture is, is the colour, the composition, and this beautiful silhouette in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, this silhouette is really quite exceptional. Um, this guy has the most incredible nose and profile, but he's also smoking a cigarette, and the cigarette is just millimetres from his lips. There's actually a little bit of daylight between the two, which is a, which is a very nice touch, perfect moment. But it's also com composed very, very nicely. I go on all the time about uh, those two decisions, the framing and the moment that you choose. And if you get them both right in the same frame, very often it's a successful street photograph. And I think this is a very good example of that. Uh, obviously, the, uh, um, the complementary colours in this, the orange with the, with the pale blue, at working absolutely beautifully together. Um, and then the light and shadow, of course. Um, there's a rather nice vertical dark shadow in, on the blue hoarding, which then meets the vertical pillar behind. Um, now that's a connection that's just been made by the angle of the camera, but that's, uh, you know, that's very, very nice. That's what we do. So, um, yeah, that's a terrific frame. There's a lot going on well there. And I think, um, I think it was a right decision to shoot that in portrait as well, in portrait format. Um, I think it's very nice. Okay. Here's another picture. This is by Michael Matt, shot in Soho in London, apparently. Um, now what I liked about this is that it's one of those things which is just a very ordinary event. Uh, it looks like a woman with a coffee cup leaving a shop in Soho. Um, but the act of making a photograph has, has elevated that simple uh, situation into something rather beautiful. Um, I think it's taken at dusk and there's artificial lights. You can see the purple on the buildings behind. And uh, the ribbons hanging in the doorway, obviously are multicolored and they've caught the light. And they're draped all over this woman, and she's sort of in red velvet. It's a very sumptuous, hot, warm picture. Um, there's something gorgeous about it. Um, and I love the way that the camera can, you know, literally elevate these things to something new or to a new level. Uh, the very basic facts become much more glorious through the act of photography. Um, and I like the fact that when you first look at this, you're not sure what's going on. It takes you a while to decode it. You don't see everything or understand everything in the first viewing. Um, so I think that's really successful. Um, I'm going to have, have a look at more of Michael's work and see what, see what else he's doing. Uh, here's, here's a nice picture by Luke Reed uh, from Milan in Italy. 
and um, what I like about this picture is that it's absolutely full of things. There's so many little stories going on all in the same frame um, and they're all kind of unconnected. Uh, at the centre of it we have these two guys who are loading or unloading a van and often these things are, are great to hang out. If you see somebody unloading a van in the street or you know, unloading scaffolding or construction workers, anything that's just a little unusual that you can use, you can look around and start to add things to it. Um, so what we've got is, is this view into the back of the van with the guy with his hands up and he's sort of looking at his colleague and it's almost like there's just a moment of pausing there where they're discussing you know what to do next or something. There's a little, so there's that little narrative. Then in the bottom left hand corner perfectly placed is this guy walking in with the telephone. Now he's really important this character in the bottom left hand corner. He's, it's where everything starts from. He's like the foreground and then we have the guys with the van in the middle ground and then we have the building and the view down the street in the background. Um, so there's these nice sort of layers going on. And I do like the, the contrasting kind of avenues, the views. So there's a view into the van, and then to the right there's a view down the street. And the picture has a kind of depth because of that. There's, there are places that your eye can go and explore. The boxes are very nice in that little line at the bottom of the frame there. Um, the light's gorgeous. There's lots of really nice things happening here. Um, it's a very nice, busy, full frame, something which I always appreciate. Okay, I'm going to look at two pictures now, uh, which... which um, which were submitted and uh, they're both very similar so I'm going to kind of show them together. So this is by Matt GH83, uh, I think it's taken in the Barbican Centre. So both these pictures are kind of cityscapes with small people in them. Um, so like people in the landscape which is which is a really nice theme and if you're starting out with street photography it's something which you can, you know, it's not very, it's very unconfrontational, it's something you can start very easily, um, you know, to practice before you perhaps get closer to people. So this one's very nice because it's very cool. The colour balance is very cool. Um, maybe it's taken before or after a storm or it's early in the morning. And then you have this one very hot uh, figure here wearing yellow, which is a lovely contrast to the blue. Beyond is another figure, um, slightly silhouetted against the light. For me, I think the picture might be better without that second figure, but I don't think it spoils it. Um, and I think it's very nice the way that the camera has been kept upright. Again, there's this sort of discipline with the composition, um, which just helps makes, makes, thing, makes things look deliberate. Uh, you can see all the architecture is, is uh, ver vertical. The ver so the camera is not looking up or down. So if you can keep the back of the camera parallel um, you know, and upright, this is really going to help, help, your, uh, help your compositions. Uh, here's a similar image. This one's using light again. So if you look how how tiny a part of this picture the figure is, and yet at the right at the centre of the picture, um, absolutely integral to it. So um, again, this is something. This is by James Sclee, sorry James Clee of Toronto, Ontario. So this is this is something an approach you can take. You know, in any city probably. Um, just placing a small figure in a huge cityscape environment. Okay, here's a nice picture. This is by Andrea Camino, who I think is in Italy. We've had some correspondence before, I think, Andrea and I. Um, and if I re recall correctly, Andrea's work is quite often quite quite traditional and, and very Italian. I think one of her pictures is of a lady in black and white uh, walking in the rain on a cobbled street. Um, so I chose this one because it's, it's so contemporary, um, which I really liked. It's full of layers. There's this lovely muted colour palette, these sort of blues and greys. And there's lots of little different worlds going on here. There's, to the left there's a guy standing on the railings. I can't tell if he's looking at the camera or not. Um, and then there's sort of a, ve a veil of water, falling drips of water between us and him, as well as glass. Then there's a girl in the middle who's beautifully lit, nice shadow, um, lovely light on her face. She's against this beautiful pale blue wall. Um, but we're also seeing her through two layers of glass. So everything is slightly muted. Um, and then in the glass we have reflections. So there's shadows, reflections, there's um, you know, the layers. Um, there's so many nice things going on. And up above in the top right hand corner, uh, you can see some people leaning on a glass railing there. And you can even see a view up to the street and the sky. So there's, there's lots of different spaces here, lots of nice things going on. It's nicely comp composed. It's just very pleasant to look at. Okay. Next picture is this picture by Carl Batson Photo, which I think is taken in Soho in New York. Um, and right at the heart of the centre, there's a lovely tender moment between this couple. 
Uh, the girl on the left has a big shopping bag. Look, looks like she's been shopping and they've, they've met up. There's almost a hint of a, a story, a narrative before the moment, before the picture was taken. And this is just lovely gesture here where she's holding this, uh, part, uh, this girl's head and she's kind of looking at her lips and the other girl's looking into her face. It's, it's, you know, it's just an incredibly intimate moment in a public place, which is something we all love as street photographers. And that would be enough. That would be enough for a great picture as far as I'm concerned. But off to the left here, Kyle has put um, this other lady who's either just about to yawn or just about to cover her mouth or something like that. Um, and she's in this green top, which adds a really nice element to it. She's nice and close to the camera, but she's also sharp. So that's all that's all working well. The only thing I'm not sure about is the fact that she's looking at the camera, which is something which, which I, I don't really like myself. Um, I think as soon as you have eye contact with somebody in a photograph, the picture changes its meaning. It becomes about your relationship to that person rather than an observation of, of the world um, unfolding before you. Um, there, there's a different relationship suddenly. I've noticed this when I'm shooting on London Bridge and people are walking towards me in the street and I start photographing them and I get three or four frames and then in the fifth frame, they spot me. And when I look at those, when I edit those later, I go through those five frames and suddenly there's a change of relationship in that fifth frame. Um, and I never, I never choose those, those pictures. I always choose the ones before eye contact was made. Um, but that's a personal choice of mine. Um, anyway, it's still a very nice picture. I really like it. Okay, now here's a picture which I've popped in. Uh, this is by Ryan Hardman, who is based in Devon in the UK. Uh, Ryan is a recent photography graduate. And um, I have been mentoring Ryan through this uh, last few months uh, while he shoots a project uh, in the city of Plymouth on the south coast of the UK. Um, and I guess this is quite, it's, just like, it's like a navy town, it's quite a working class town, I guess. And, and Ryan has sort of been shooting a series of images which capture the sort of texture and flavour of this place, uh, but all in the, with the approach of a street photographer. And uh, this is a frame uh, which I quite like, this couple, it's just a, it's a nice, it's a portrait of a kind of person as much as a portrait of these individuals, I think. Um, I like the way she's sort of clinging, the wife is sort of clinging to the husband's arm there. Of course, there's this huge dog's face, which is incredibly bold. The light's very, very nice. Um, I, I think it's a successful picture. Um, and I like the way that it's shot, you know, halfway down, uh, that, that uh, Ryan has crouched to sort of, to sort of capture them uh, in that way. Um, yeah, go and have a look at Ryan Hardman's project um, on Plymouth, and uh, you can see some of the other pictures that, uh, that go with this one. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, here's another picture I like by The Chemist Street uh, from Bologna, Italy. Now, <clears throat> this is quite an interesting image. This, again, this is a very hot, warm, colourful image. Um, and I think what I like about this is it's very cinematic. It looks like a film still. The colours are incredible. We're, uh, the, the picture is bound either side by these honey-coloured vertical strips. Um, they form a frame and we look between those into this restaurant window. Um, and you can see there's a, a red curtain with the green foliage, which, which uh, goes very, very well together. And there's very interesting lighting. So there's this kind of, there's like a sense of drama in this picture. I mean, it's probably just a person having a meal in a restaurant. It's as simple as that, uh, almost certainly. But there's a sense of mystery in the way that it's been framed in this very graphic way. And you see here, there's um, a hand just poking in on the right-hand side, just holding the edge of the bar or the railing there. And you just get a sense of this person who's out of sight, who could be involved in some way uh, with, this, with the person who's seated. Um, so it kind of looks like a Hollywood film still. There are kind of hint, hints of sort of, uh, like, I don't know, gangsters or murder mystery or something about it. And these are things which I, as a viewer, are just bringing to this picture. But, but I can only bring those interpretations because of the elements that, um, you know, that I've been presented with by the photographer. So. Um, I think this kind of approach is, is, is very interesting and uh, I find it a really engaging image. Okay, so I think my favourite image that I saw over the last 10 days from all the pictures uploaded to Street Photo Review, uh, the hashtag, uh, is another picture by Cesar Zamello who we, are, who we started off with. Um, and look at this lovely image. Um, one of the things I noticed first about this is the beautiful color palette, the muted color palette. Um, the blues, the greens, the khaki trousers, 
uh, the blue sky behind. It's 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 a it's a lovely lovely color palette. Um, and then I noticed the composition. Uh, Caesar has lined everything up very very beautiful. The spacing around the figures left and right is very equal. Um, the bottom of the glass is parallel to the bottom of the frame. He's kept the camera upright. It's just composed beautifully. And so all these sort of rectangles in the frame, that black square, the white piece of paper is taped to the glass there. Um, they're all they all fit beautifully into the rectangle of the actual camera frame. Uh, I very much like the two straps uh, from the bags across the backs of these two guys sitting sitting at the bus stop there, if that's what it is. And, uh, and of course the hands of the guy who's standing. I and mean, this standing figure is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Who, which of us wouldn't have gone and photographed that? Um, so his hands against the glass, absolutely beautiful. And then the frosting effect of the glass is, um, is something which works incredibly well. The, the way that it diffuses the background, uh, the colours and the shapes beyond the glass. Um, it, it's been used very nicely. And finally, he has a white uh, A4 piece of paper for a head. Uh, so there's kind of an element of humour as well. So it works on a number of number of levels. It's just a very beautiful photograph. Um, I think you'll all agree. So um, there you go. Well done, Caesar. You got two pictures in this uh, this little review. Um, so go and check out uh, Caesar's work and the work of all the other photographers here that I have uh, I've picked out on this occasion. Um, please do. Uh, post your images on Instagram, your street photographs with hashtag street photo review and in another couple of videos time I will review another selection of pictures. Thanks so much for taking part.